Chris, first day here at training camp, and you talked about earlier in some of your press conferences how important it is for a team to get away from their training facility. I think you mentioned you're one of only five teams left in the NFL that does that. Yeah, I mean, well, look, you got to get your team ready to play, so that's number one priority. Um, and, you know, here in Westfield at Grand Park, we got everything contained. You know, we got the practice fields, we got an indoor with three practice fields, training, get everything we have at our facility. Um, and then our players can stay together. And we think it's important. We're here for a month. They're all together for a month. And I don't think you can put a price on the camaraderie that they build over this time. And then Mr. Ursay told me when I first took this job, the connection with the fans. And that's the one thing when you see back behind us that – you know, our ability of our players to connect with the fans each and every day, our fans to be able to come out for free, to be able to watch our team, get to know them. Um, I think that's a really cool thing, and I don't, I don't ever want us to lose that. Let's go back to this past off season, and you were able to trade Carson Wentz to the Washington Commanders, and there was a period between that and when you were able to pull the trade off for Matt Ryan. Can you take us behind the scenes on, from a GM perspective, what's going on? You have a very talented young roster, but yet maybe the most important position that needs to be filled, uh, there's some questions going into that. Yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting you know, few weeks there when we were, you know, we looked at the whole quarterback market, and we had kind of marked down four or five players that we said, okay, if we get one of these guys, he's, we can win with them. And then we knew we would also kind of track the Deshaun, what was going on with Deshaun and where he ended up and could catch the, you know, wherever the fallout was there. And, and just lo and behold, because of, I give Frank credit and I give our coaching staff credit, they, they were patient. They, they, they bought into what, you know, we said, where we just, we're going to be very patient here and take our time. And when the right guy presents himself, we'll make a move aggressively for him. And, you know, fortunate for us with Matt Ryan. Yeah, and then um, talk about, you talked about Matt Ryan and what he brings to this team and expectations, and I think you even referred back to when you brought Phillip Rivers in here and what he meant to this team. So talk a little bit about Matt as your, and your expectations this year on him. Just when you, you know, I remember when Phillip just the, won the urgency because where they're at in their careers. You know, there's a, there's a definite set of urgency with them where, hey, man, I don't know how much I got left. You know, but whatever I do have left, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna press the envelope on winning and doing things the right way. So, from a from a professional standpoint, he's a true pro. He shows up to work every day, demands excellence from everybody in the building, um, and it's refreshing for him. And especially at 37 years old, you wouldn't know it. Um, <laughs> you know, he shows up and does the work, and um, I think it's been a little bit of a renewed spirit for him. Um, but he's been outstanding in that regard. And you lost Matt Eberflus. He got his first opportunity to be a head coach and went over to the Chicago Bears, and you were able to hire Gus Bradley. So talk about the transition, because you guys have always been excellent on the defensive side of the ball, potentially the scheme change, and then how does that affect you from a personnel standpoint? Does he have different specific, position specifics that he's looking for, and did that dictate in some of the directions you went in signing free agents or, or in the draft? Yeah, it's a schematically very similar. You know, they're both both based out of a 4-3 and both based off of they want athletes with speed. Um, and, you know, that was one of the attractions to Gus because from a personnel standpoint, we didn't have to make a lot of wholesale changes. Um, and there's some little tweaks with what they do with their linebackers, with their Sam or what they call an auto where we can rush him. Um, and they have a Leo position. Uh, which is really just a, a three, four outside backer. So there's some tweaks that we can use to make us a little more versatile. Um, but personnel wise, uh, looking for the same traits. Okay. And finally, I wanted to talk about your role here during training camp. And you have spent all off season trying to fill the needs of your roster through free agency, through the draft. But everybody is looking at everybody else's roster this time of year. And I know we used to have our scouts out and everybody was assigned teams. And, but, from your side of it, when do you start to realize that, hey, we may need help here at this position, and when do you really start honing in on, 
you know, trying to fill some of the needs that you may have going into the regular season? Yeah, that's a good question. So, like today was our first day at PADS, and I think that's really when the evaluation starts. You know, OTAs is great, but it's more about learning fundamentals, uh, making sure they understand the playbook. And then the first week of the buildup is, is a lot of the same stuff. And so now that we have the PADS on, we can start making – you know, some real evaluations. We meet as an entire staff and with our coaching staff uh, two days a week, and we go through the entire roster, and we go through every positions. We rank them based on their performance, you know, for those set of practices. So if we've had three practices, we will three padded practices, those are the ones we're going to evaluate. Um, and we'll go through that process as we go along. And then as we get in after the first preseason game, when we feel like there's some deficiencies, like, okay, here are some positions that we need to start studying and targeting. Um, we'll make sure our scouts get our eyes on them and place in teams that have a plethora of players at those positions. We'll make sure that those scouts get to those games to get a live look and then make in contact with those teams to see if we're able to work something out or not do anything and just wait until the claim deadline. Um, and always, you know, with our group, always tell them, look, we got – Look, we want to fix it week one, but we need to plug the holes by week five. And so we, we take our time, and and whether it's a trade, whether it's a cut down, whether it's another team's practice squad, there's a way to acquire players that can plug the hole for you for the year. And when do you show that patience of right before the 53, uh, trading for a player or taking a risk on where you're at in the claiming order and just waiting and try to fill it, in, yeah, filling that, it that way? That's a that's a great question, and that's a that's a little bit of feel and what they put on tape. I mean, usually the ones that have put it on tape are really strong. You know, you're going to have to be a little more aggressive and go get. I mean, there's, there's 31 other teams, and they're really good at their jobs. So they're looking at the same tape we're looking at. Great. Well, thanks for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. appreciate it, brother. Yep. Yeah. Good luck this season. All right. Thank you. Rick Spielman with Indianapolis General Manager Chris Ballard at Colts training camp on Tuesday. As you look at the Vegas breakdown for the Colts, they are minus 120 to win the division, plus 1,300 to win the AFC, 25 to 1 to win the Super Bowl, and they are predicted to go over or under nine and a half wins this season. The Colts open their season September 11th at the Houston Texans. That's a game you'll be able to see on CBS. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.